Assalamualaikum and hi everyone okay so this one should be the last video for your second week tutorials so in this video i'm going to discuss with you about Arrhenius equation okay if you still remember okay last time okay in our previous video we talked about Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve which explains the effect of changing temperature towards the reaction rate okay so in this uh, green highlighted curve is your Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve okay in which this yellow shaded region is referring to the fraction of successful collision okay which uh, this successful collision will lead to the formations of product okay so just to remind you for a reaction to produce a product it must fulfill the two requirements set by the collision theory which the first one the reactant molecules must have uh, the kinetic energy to be equal or more than the activation energy and secondly the reactant molecule must collide in the correct orientation okay so this yellow shaded area uh, area in your maxwell boltzmann distribution curve shows the fraction of successful collision okay just to let you know actually we can calculate the frequency of successful collision by using the arrhenius equation okay okay so this is your arrhenius equation where k is referring to the rate constant okay so the unit of rate constant should be normally per second okay so your a is your frequency factor okay your ea is here without the negative sign this is your activation energy okay so normally activation energy is in joule per mole or sometimes they simplify it into kilojoule per mole okay so r here okay r here is referring to your gas constant okay previously in semester one you also has made this gas constant value but that one is 0 0.08206 which has a different unit compared to this r value used in your Arrhenius equation so your Arrhenius equation will use the gas constant value which is 8.314 joule per mole per kelvin okay and this t is referring to temperature and the temperature must be converted into kelvin okay so what is the Arrhenius equation so Arrhenius equation is a special kind of equation which relates activation energy with the rate constant okay so in this uh, same equation we're going to use to calculate the frequency of successful collision so how are we going to calculate the frequency of successful collision okay so again this is your Arrhenius equation okay and okay this e negative ea over rt is actually your frequency of successful collision is normally this frequency of successful collision will be written as f italic okay so this f if you rewrite the formula it will equals to e minus ea over rt okay so that is if you want to calculate how many molecules has been undergo a successful collision okay okay so from your Arrhenius equation okay actually Okay, we can use that Arrhenius equation to sketch a graph to determine the value of activation energy graphically. Okay, so if let's say in this question, you are given uh, several values of rate constants at different temperature. So you, ca you can use that information to determine what is the activation energy by sketching a graph. Okay, so here I have the Arrhenius equation which equals to K equals to AE minus EA over RT. If I want to convert it into a linear equation, I'm going to add ln in front of k okay so it becomes ln k equals to ln a minus ea over rt okay if you want to compare with y equals to m x plus c which is your linear equation so ln k is my y so this one should be my y axis okay so um, negative ea over r okay so this should be my gradient 
Okay, so 1 over t is my x, okay? And ln a is your y-intercept. Okay, so if I plot, I need to plot ln k, okay, versus 1 over t because you will always be given this information of rate constant and temperature, okay? So you can manipulate these two uh, data to obtain a graph of ln k versus 1 over temperature. So from there, you can calculate your uh, activation energy. Okay, so let's say this is a simple sketch of graph of ln k versus 1 over temperature. So you're going to get a straight line. So this is a linear graph. Okay, okay, so if you want to calculate a gradient of a graph, please try to make sure you maximize the size of your gradient triangle. Okay, so maximize. Okay, so let's say I got a one point here and then the point here. Okay, so your gradient equals to negative EA over R. If you can see in this sketch of graph, okay, so your gradient is having a negative value. So that means negative equals to negative EA over R. So that negative will be cancelled out. Okay, so your EA is basically your gradient time with the r value please make sure your r value is 8.314 joule per kelvin per mole so you will get your ea value activation energy okay will always be positive positive value you never have a negative value only enthalpy is given a negative value or it can be a positive value okay so you can use the graph ln k versus 1 over temperature if you were given more than two value of rate constants and temperature and from there you are supposed to calculate activation energy. But if you were given an activation energy value but you need to calculate either the rate constants or the temperature okay, at a two different sets of temperature so you can use this equation ln K2 over K1 equals to negative EE over R or 1 over temperature second and 1 over temperature 1. Okay, so you can use this equation. Please take note about the positions of K2 over K1 and with T2 minus 1 over T1. Alright guys, so let's discuss on the questions that I give to you through the Google Classroom for your third hour second week tutorial, okay? So this is the first question where you were given a table of data which consisting of four different value of rate constants at four different temperature. And from there, you were asked to sketch a graph to determine the activation energy for the decompositions of hydrogen iodide graphically, okay? So, that means you need to plot a graph of linear graph of Arrhenius equation. Okay, if you rewrite, so Arrhenius equation for the linear graph is ln k equals to ln a minus ea over r t. Okay, so that means you need to sketch a graph of ln k versus 1 over temperature. And you will get the gradient value to be negative EA over R. Okay, so here I already plot a graph, okay, based on the given information. Okay, so here you need to find the gradient of your graph. Okay, so here I already sketched this graph and I picked these two points, okay, for my calculations of my gradient. Okay, so the two points here is for my x value is 1.3 times 10 to the power of negative 3 for my x1 and y1 is negative 4. Okay, whereas for the second one, okay, my x is 1.9 times 10 to the power of negative 3 and my y second is negative 17. Okay, so let's calculate the gradient. So gradient equals to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so my y2 is negative 17 minus negative 4 over 1.9 times 10 minus 3. Okay, 
minus 1.3 times 10 negative 3. Okay, if you press your calculator, you will get the value to be negative 21.67 times 10 to the power of 3. So this is my gradient. Okay, so how are we going to calculate uh, the value of activation energy from this uh, calculated gradient value? Okay, still remember ln k equals to ln a minus E A over R 1 over T. Okay, so my gradient is this one, negative E A over R. So, gradient equals to negative E A over R. Okay, so from the graph, I get my gradient to be negative 2, 1.67 time 10 to the power of 3 which equals to my negative activation energy and r is 8.314 per joule per mole per kelvin okay so this negative on both sides can be cancelled okay and this r value i'm going to multiply with the gradient value so i can get my ea okay so my ea okay i will get it to be 180.14 times 10 to the power of 3 joule per mole. Okay, so 10 to the power of 3 can be simplified as 180.14 kilojoule per mole. So this is the activation energy for my decompositions of hydrogen iodide from the sketch of graph that I plot. Okay, so Let's move on to the second question. Okay, so in the second question, you were given two different value of temperature and two different value of rate constant. So the first one is 463K with the rate constant of 2.52 times 10 to the power of negative 5 per second. Okay, and secondly, at 503 Kelvin, you will have the rate constant to be 6.30 times 10 to the power of negative 4 per second and from there you were asked to calculate what is the activation energy okay so two different k value with two different temperature that means you're going to use this equation okay so ln k2 over k1 equals to negative ea over r 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Okay, if you want to use this uh, formula, you need to make sure the temperature is in Kelvin. And both temperature that they give you is already in Kelvin. But first, we need to state which one is uh, our first temperature and which one is our second temperature. So, 463K, which is the smaller temperature, should be your T1. Okay, so this is my K1 and then 503 Kelvin. Okay, this is my T2 and this is my K2. Okay, after labeling that, then you can move on to substitute the given information into our formula. Okay, so it becomes ln. Okay, so ln K2. So your K2 is 6.30 times 10 to the power of negative 4 per second. Okay, over K1, which is 2.52 times 10 to the power of negative 5 per second. Okay, so equals to minus EA. You're going to find out your R is 8.314 joule per mole per Kelvin. Okay, 1 over T2. So your second temperature is 503 Kelvin. Minus your first temperature is 463 Kelvin. Okay, so if you solve this question, okay, so you will get your activation energy to be 61.8 kilojoule per mole. Okay. So it's a bit of mathematical process and I don't want I want to skip that long process. Okay, you can try it. If you still don't understand about the long pro mathematic process, you can always the PM me in my telegram. Okay, so let's move on to the third question. 
So this is your third question. Okay, it says that the first order reaction has a rate constant of 3.462 times 10 to the power negative 2 per second at 25 degrees Celsius. So if the activation energy is 502 point kilojoule per mole so calculate the rate constant at 350 kelvin so in this time okay you will ask to calculate what is the rate constant okay so again it's relate two different rate constant at two different temperature so you're going to use the same formula as you use in your second question which is ln k2 over k1 equals to negative Ea over R 1 over T 2 minus 1 over T 1. Okay, so this formula you need to memorize because it will not be given in your exam. Okay, all the formula that you learn throughout this video, you need to memorize. Okay, so let's substitute the equation with the information given. Okay, like always, you need to make sure your temperature has been converted into Kelvin and your T1 should be lower temperature compared to your T2 okay so T1 less than T2 okay so my T1 is 25 degrees Celsius I need to convert it into Kelvin okay so 20, um, T1 equals to 25 plus 273.15 so I got to 98.15 Kelvin and this is my first K1 equals to 3.46 times 10 to the power negative 2 per second so T2 equals to 350k and K2 is to be found okay so that's all the formations that we obtain including my EA to be 50.2 kilojoule per mole and if you want to use in the formula, you need to convert it into 50.2 times 10 to the power of 3 joule per mole. Okay, and then after obtaining all this information, and now we can try to solve the question. Okay, so substitute the, all the values we obtained into the equation. So my K2 unknown and my K1 is 3.46 times 10 to the power of negative 2 per second. So equals to negative 50.2 times 10 to the power of 3 over 8.314. So my T2 is 350k minus 1 over 250. Okay. Okay. Try to solve the questions and you will get the value of your K2. To be 0 0.695 per second okay again in this one it involves another long process of mathematical solution so try to do and if you stuck anywhere you can always ask me okay so we already discussed the three questions and now let's move on to the last questions of our exercise which is your question four Okay, so your question 4 is slightly different compared to your first three questions. Okay, and this one, we're going to use another equation, uh, which we already discussed about Arrhenius equation. Okay, decompositions of N2O5 at 300 Kelvin. So this is a temperature, has a rate constant of 1.35 times 10 to the negative 4 per second. The Arrhenius constant for this reaction is 4.79 times 10 to the power of 13 per second. Calculate what is the activation energy. Okay, so let's list out the formula. Uh, let's list out the information that we obtain from the question. So temperature equals to 300 Kelvin. Okay, K equals to 1.35 times 10 to the power of negative 4 per second so Arrhenius constant is referring to your E okay, the, or it's a frequency factor which is 4.79 times 10 to the power of 13 per second and what is Ea okay so with this information that we are uh, we have oh, we need to solve it by using formula K equals to Ea Minus Ea over 
R D. Okay, so your K is 1.35 times 10 to the power of negative 4 per second. So, okay, so your A is 4.79 times 10 to the power of 13 per second. Okay, so your EA is unknown. You're going to be fine out. Okay, so your R is 8.314 time with the temperature which already in Kelvin 308. Okay, so let me cut you on how to settle this and get your EA. Okay, so I'm going to move all of this E into the, my left side so it will become a divide. So 1.35 times 10 to the power negative 4 per second divided by 4.79 times 10 to the power of 13 per second equals to E minus EA over and RT. Okay, we calculate this one. Okay, R times the temperature given 2560.71. Okay, so if you solve on your left side, you will get 2.818 times 10 to the power of negative 18, which is equals to E minus EA over RT. Okay, so since I want to cancel out this E, it becomes, I'm going to add ln here. Okay. So ln E minus EA over Okay, so this ln E Okay, it becomes 1. So, leaving us here negative EA over Okay, so if I want to calculate what is my activation energy okay so this negative sign will cancel out since it's present in both left side and on right side and this value i'm going to multiply with my value on the left side so lastly my ea okay will become one zero three four seven eight joule per mole and i'm going to simplify this and turn it into kilojoule per mole okay which becomes 103.5 kilojoule per mole so this is the activation energy for my questions number four all right guys so in your chapter one okay so we already discussed about 1.1 which consisting of your rate of reaction okay so in this rate of reaction we already learned about rate law okay and then integrated rate law okay so you have made up about half life and then a rate constant okay so you made a with several ways to calculate your order of reaction okay so order of reaction which consisted of three different ways by using the initial rate method Okay, secondly, by using the linear graph method. And lastly, is by using half-life method. Okay, and then in 1.2, we learned about collision theory. So, under collision theory, we talk about successful collision. Okay, and then... In 1.3, we talks about factors affecting reaction rate. Okay, in which there are several factors which include concentration, temperature, pressure, volume, catalyst, as well as particle size. Okay, and this is factors affecting reaction rate. You meet up with two different graphs. Okay, so energy profile diagram to explain about the difference in the activation energy with and without catalyst. And secondly, you meet up with Maxwell 
Postman distribution curve in which in this one you learn about the effect of temperature towards the reaction rate okay so from here okay this under the factors affecting reaction rate you also learn about Arrhenius equation Okay, so all the equations that you learn from this chapter 1, you need to memorize. Okay, so write down uh, the final unit at your final answers whenever you have to solve the questions. So in the same time, you learn a lot about sketching graph. Okay, so you learn about how to sketch a graph of concentration versus time in the half-life method. And then you learn about how to sketch a linear graph method by using the integrated rate law. Okay, so you need to memorize uh, that different integrated rate law formula as well. Okay, so thank you for watching and see you guys again with our first topical test in chapter 1. And see you guys next time in my next video for chapter 2. Bye-bye.